one thing with Modern Warfare 2019 that really stood out was the movement. There's probably a number of things that also did as well, but the movement might be one of those things that sticks with you the most. But given that it was such a drastic change from anything we had seen beforehand and to what immediately followed in Black Ops Cold War's movement, movement is a big topic of discussion with what is upcoming for Modern Warfare 2. So today, I don't run down what we know of in regards to some new movement systems, some mechanics, and overall gameplay features returning or being first introduced with Modern Warfare 2. So as we go along, drop your thoughts down below. Are you looking forward to anything in particular? Are you hoping to see the return of anything, removal of anything? Let me know. If you enjoyed the video though, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button to stay to date with all things Modern Warfare 2. We've still got a bit to talk about ahead of the Season 4 launch here for Warzone and Vanguard, so I'd love to have you in the community as we push towards half a million subscribers. But that said, let's jump into the discussion at hand. So Modern Warfare 2019 absolutely shook things up, introducing things like slide canceling, tax sprint, and all of that that we hadn't seen beforehand and immediately after in Black Ops Cold War we didn't. So then when you jump from Black Ops Cold War to Modern Warfare 2019 and the Wars and Experience. It was kind of a system shock here if you got used to one or the other. Vanguard introduced and kept some elements here that were around with Modern Warfare 2019, though not being exactly one-to-one, -one, but Modern Warfare 2 looks to expand upon that vision that Modern Warfare 2019 introduced and allow for further unique gameplay styles. From all that's reported and seen, it's really seeming like the game is attempting keyword there, attempting to give something for everybody, and while being simplistic in nature, it still can offer up a multitude of different ways to engage enemies. From our pre-reveal debrief with Infinity Ward, we learned a lot about new mechanics coming. Firstly, the one that was really intriguing to me was the Dolphin Dive returning, but for the first time within an Infinity Ward game here. For this, it's going to be something that's available on top of and not excluding any sort of sliding mechanic that we'll end up seeing within Modern Warfare 2. So, pretty cool that we'll be able to have the distinction of utilizing both of the these. Right now, I don't think it's been detailed officially. It is rumored that it's going to be simply something as holding will dolphin dive, tapping will slide on whatever you have that bound to. So if that's the case, it might take a little bit of a learning curve to make sure that you're not overcorrecting or holding that button too long, but certainly nice to see that dolphin diving will make a return here within Modern Warfare 2. Next, swimming, of course, we've talked about this one before, so we won't stay on it too long, but swimming, of course, being a big thing being added in here. The big talking point out of this sort of engine upgrade for Modern Warfare 2 or one of the big ones was water. How much water reacts with players when swimming, how much water reacts with vehicles, all kinds of stuff like that. But swimming with Modern Warfare 2 brings in a lot of opportunities for different maps, play styles, and even the future of things like Warzone 2, being able to offer up different design elements within a map when we take a look at what launches with Warzone 2 and what we see beyond. Jumping into water to evade a player or something like that won't result in instant death like it has before. But along with swimming, this will also change a multitude of different things in relation to how how you end up playing your game. Number one, visibility will be something that is a little bit more obstructed. It's mentioned that whenever you jump into the water, you'll first have that sort of murky water feeling around you where things are blurred, dirt is thrown up into the water, depending on probably the depth. We already learned about how weapons shooting in and out of the water will be adjusted, taking into account real life ballistic factors, i.e. shooting out of the water will slow down that bullet velocity, taking then multiple shots to kill an enemy as opposed to potentially one if it was just an in-air gunfight. And also it will allow for new boats, amphibious vehicles, but also equipment to interact with that environment differently. So it's going to be something we have to be conscious of. The ledge hang was another one that was introduced here in which you can end up dropping down from a ledge or pulling up to it while being able to peek with your pistols as if you could climbing up ladders in Modern Warfare 2019, but a new way to go about that. It would also make for some interesting platforming mechanics, which I'm sure we'll see come to life in the campaign, whether or not that ends up happening in multiplayer as well, to the degree of like, hey, jump from this ledge to that ledge or shimmy across a ledge. We'll have to wait and see how that all plays out, but I can absolutely see that being something we have to do in campaign. The final thing we were described explicitly was that of dynamic vehicle gameplay, a new way to take driving to the next level. Modern Warfare 2019 introduced some driving mechanics, albeit sort of basic for the Modern Warfare 2019 engine and beyond, what we also saw in Warzone, but with Modern Warfare 2 and then what will be shared with Warzone 2, you'll be able to lean out windows, climb on rooftops, knock off doors, you'll be able to repair these vehicles as well. You can blow out tires, which will then change the trajectory of the vehicle itself. And then all of this will just offer up a little bit more unique a gameplay experience and makes riding in vehicles maybe not so dangerous if you're just the passenger that has to sit there. Now, that's the stuff that we've heard about officially, but as of yesterday, Ralph's Valve Insider that we've talked about here plenty of times on the channel, put up a report talking about a couple of more movement and gameplay mechanics that while the rest of that stuff absolutely is confirmed, this seems to 
to have an air of plausibility. Ralph has been right on a plenty number of things, so I'm at least inclined to take this with a grain of salt, hear it out, but he states that we'll also end up seeing ladders and ropes introduced into the campaign spec ops and multiplayer experience here, stating that with ladders, you'll be able to vertically position equipment alongside walls, containers, and buildings, though if not supported, it will fall down and shatter, causing the field upgrade to reset. For ropes, you'll be able to repel down, and this was actually something that kind of makes sense because we saw a campaign mission with repelling explicitly a part of that. So seemingly allowing you to scale up or down buildings with this tool, but you can end up swinging through windows into collapsed walls and a various number of locations. Stating that you can also attach this rope to vehicles or players, allowing potentially for like a war zone downed player to get a revive somewhere else, but taking them off, dragging them to safety, essentially. Kind of interesting how that would work out, but we'll see. He also states that shifting and strafing will be in the game, allowing you to move sideways in any direction as well as backwards, giving you a little bit more of an advantage here if you have to say turn a corner and then quickly dart backwards without really having to take yourself into a more vulnerable position. He states that a wall climb along with ledge hanging will be available, meaning you can end up vertically climbing up certain amounts of walls determined by the height of the platform you're trying to reach and mount. I'm not expecting this to be some sort of like Spider-Man stuff, more so just smaller vertical walls that might just be a little bit higher than sprinting, jumping, and mantling over top of it. Something that adds a little bit of a mechanic to that to make it not so inaccessible. Then for movement mechanics, he stated that sliding will be revised here, allowing for players to now slide into a prone position as as well as down angled inclines and slopes. That last part is huge because this has been problematic in Warzone plenty number of times. They stated they fixed it, I think early in like Verdansk 84 that got fixed, then broke again, and then recently was fixed within Caldera. So to not have that problem from day one would be phenomenal. Absolutely all here for that. But sliding being revised, we'll talk about that in a second, but what that means for the fate of slide canceling, we don't quite know. He also finally, in terms of movement, mentioned bunny hopping, being dependent on the player height and the momentum you have going into that to be able to chain together those speed boost jumps that bunny hopping allows. Bunny hopping has always been something you can do in Call of Duty, but it seems like this might be more reflective of a realistic approach to it. Outside of that, Ralph ended up also detailing a few gameplay features that might be interesting, including a quick sidearm draw that will apparently allow you to quickly switch to your sidearm with one hand, but also can be done with lethals. There also is mentioned there's going to be a suppression meter, which kind of seems like it will be relating to Gunsmith, if I were to guess, because we talked about how you can end up customizing each attachment in Gunsmith in this new revised system, but stating on the sizing and the adjustment of the suppressor, it of course will affect recoil, damage, and the existing ranges, so therefore you're going to have a suppression meter that will allow you to sort of see that visually. Weapon handling, he also stated with grips, players will be able to have the option to choose between a certain number of tactical and technique grips, affecting accuracy and speed of the weapon. He stated explicitly that the magwell grips and C-clamp grips are sort of those examples they gave. He stated also that there will be a magazine check animation present that might not be something you see every single game, but he stated that for a limited heads up display or that HUD, game modes that utilize a more simplistic nature to that, something like hardcore, something like realism, if that returns, you'll be able to inspect your weapon to see the amount of ammunition you have in each magazine, which is a pretty cool realistic feature, but we'll have to see how much use that actually gets and if it actually comes. And finally, he stated that some reticles will have the ammunition count on it to allow for more of that heads up display on how much ammo you have, stating that he saw this on revolvers and shotguns, which is kind of weird to me that those would be the two that he saw. But regardless, that is some additional gameplay features and mechanics in regards to movement and overall gameplay. And finally, circling back around to what Modern Warfare 2019 introduced, tax sprint and slide canceling. Right now, neither of those two things are confirmed. We didn't see anything officially in regards to this in our pre-briefing with Infinity Ward. I don't believe that Ralph has commented on it, so right now, there seems to be no word on if either of those two things will return, which may be good, maybe bad, depending on who you ask. I think the only people that would have the insight into that were the people that were actually in Los Angeles at Infinity Ward Studio for the in-person briefing, which they would still be embargoed until later this summer, until like when multiplayer was about to be revealed to everybody. That's the only people I think that would have those answers to that, the ones that actually got hands-on time already. I think it was mentioned that some people caught some of the animations in the game play from the campaign that we saw, but I don't think that tax sprint was anything that would have been shown off. I think if there was a little bit of a sprint mechanic, it wouldn't be that tax sprint by default. Instead, just kind of showcasing a little bit of the regular movement itself. Those campaign gameplays are usually to show off a little bit of the story, a little bit of the weaponry, and a little bit of the basic mechanics. So going too far in depth with that wouldn't be something that really happens, but I'm really curious to see if those two core pillars of Modern Warfare 2019 do make a return. I wouldn't be surprised if they do, but at the same time with nothing said just yet, I don't know if I'd be surprised if one, if not both of those got axed. 
We'll have to wait and see, though. That said, that's where we're going to wrap it up. I would love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. From what we have confirmed already, there's some really cool stuff. But also from what seems to be upcoming, stuff that has not been released or revealed just yet, it also sounds pretty interesting. So I'd love to get your feedback on all of that. Like some of this stuff, dislike some of this stuff. Whatever the case, drop your thoughts below. But if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Modern Warfare 2. We have still a lot to talk about upcoming. And of course, with Season 4 on the horizon for Warzone and Vanguard, if you guys are interested in that, we'll keep it the day with all of it. So if you'd like to join us on the road to half a million subscribers, I'd love to have you in the community. But that said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.